Yeah. There we go. Jeez. That garage is a freaking handful, man. Anyway, so we're gonna run some errands real quick. Uh, I gotta put this on, because I can't see you guys. We gotta get some gas for tomorrow's trip, and then I gotta get a car wash, so. Plus, I need my coffee slash energy drink. What kind of energy drink do you guys drink? I like Monsters, I like Red Bull. Red Bull's my favorite. Like I said, I gotta get me maybe breakfast. I don't know, man, I don't, I don't usually eat breakfast anyways. I just kind of go with the flow, eat crackers and bananas, stuff like that. I gotta stop at Home Depot. I gotta buy a clamp for my uh, dishwasher that they just installed because it was not working properly. Yeah, just take a long. It's gonna be a long day. We are gonna talk about why mono and floral matters, okay? This is, we're gonna break it all down. Let me just do this real quick and I'll see you guys uh, whenever, I guess, yeah. Come on, man. Okay, there it is. I'm just gonna fill it up, so. If you guys are wondering, my car takes 16 gallon. It's not empty now, but I'm gonna probably pump like, it's probably gonna be like more like 11 or 12 gallon. It's not too bad. You know, the car runs about 19 to 22 miles per gallon on a highway on a like, you know, on a straight shot, obviously if it's up and down and curved. It'll vary from like, you know, 19 to 20 still, but overall a lot better than a truck. I can travel more. I, I got enough room to do whatever I want. And yeah, not too bad. And now it's at, uh, $35. Oh, there it is. $43 at 14.6. It's pretty good. Not bad. Full runner. They do the trick. They're beastie. Dude, guys, um, I just remember why I've been holding up on the car wash. I totally forgot that my glass back there, my rear glass, not the backpack glass, but the side glass is still broken. <laughs> Dude, I just, I'm like, what is that noise? It's really, it's rattling, you know, from the air dryer. I just remember that it's still broken. So I hope water didn't get back there. So we're gonna check it out once we get home. So stay tuned. Let's check here, guys. Oh no, it didn't go through. <laughs> yeah, it's still, uh, still broken, but it's okay. We're gonna get it replaced soon. Um, just not quite yet because boy it's still dirty look at this bro it's what happened when you pay for uh seven dollars of car wash all right guys so back in my not cleaned up yet area let me change my hat i don't want to wear a beanie inside here expedition hat from walmart that was like seven bucks but i like it because it's i don't know i just like this color you know that tan that grayish color just me again if it looks like it's messy here it's not these are just like the boxes with miscellaneous stuff in there it's gonna go in that closet i just haven't really like dug through it because again it's not like most of them they're not important there's just like books and board games and stuff like that i need to drink some water So we are going to settle this once and for all okay we're gonna settle this once and for all because um it's important let me show you guys the biggest question I get during the spring season, fall season, pumping fly season, right? That's what we're gonna call it, is that what should I use as leader? If you guys don't know what a leader is, it's basically a, because there's braid, right? There's braid to leader, meaning like to floral or mono. And the leader is the extra line that you don't want the fish to see. So we're gonna talk about it right now. We're gonna dissect why it's important to fish certain leader at certain time and when to use it, where to use it, Stuff like that. We're gonna answer that in this video right now. So you have two type of leader that I know of. Okay, maybe in other countries they have different special uh, leader, but in in US here we call it fluorocarbon and monofilament. Okay, if you guys don't know what that is, Google it. I'll even leave it right here. The two type of line that I have here are not just put it as they're not brand specific. I just they're just the ones that I use and I have them here because. I have a bunch of stuff laying around for pumping flies specifically, okay? Now, yeah, first thing you need to understand that fluorocarbon sink. Now, it's not like a rapid sink. It's not like it's weighted or anything like that where it's just gonna like descend to the bottom of the, the floor when you're fishing it. Monofilament, on the other hand, they float. Now, do I think they float on top of the water? Not necessarily, okay? They're not like braid where they hang up there pretty long, but they do descend very, very slow. Like they, they drop really slow in the water column. Do I know the scientific rate that they drop? No, I don't. But I'm just here to tell you that floral, sink, monofilament, 
flow. When you're pumping flies, when you're pumping gulp, minnows, you're using a one ounce sinker. I'm gonna tell you guys this right now, okay? I use monofilament and this is not the line that I use to pump flies. I just have it around here because again, I have everything everywhere. So it'll say on the cover right here that it's monofilament, right? Really tiny right there. And when you go and buy lines, you'll see that M word, monofilament, okay? So I think I'm saying it right. The other one is fluorocarbon, AKA fluoro. It is P line for fluorocarbon. Again, I'm not sponsored by any of these company. I just have it, okay? But by the way, I think Mr. Crappie is monofilament. I just, I need a better description of like the name shown on here. That's why I put it on the side. Back to where I was talking about. These are six pound tests, monofilament or fluorocarbon. Now during later in the season, I do use eight pound tests because white bass, they don't really care. Like they'll just eat. They don't care about what the line is. Uh, but for walleyes, I like six pound tests, fluorocarbon, monofilament. Me, I use monofilament more than I use fluorocarbon. The time when I do want to use it is when the water is high, okay? When the water is high, it's moving, it's faster, it's deeper. Monofilament is what I'm going to use. Why? Because now the water column has changed. Why you want to use it? It's because uh, it allows your fly, your goat minnow, your hook, your bait, whatever you're throwing on there to hang in the strike zone a little longer than fluorocarbon. This way right here, when I use it, I'm able to tell when I'm twitching the sinker, right? I'm able to tell when it sits at a pool. I can hang that fly there a little longer than I can with fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon tend to like fall. It tends to like you know, drop. So if you hang in there too long, it might get snagged. But with monofilament, it allows your fly to stay off the bottom a little longer, okay? Do current matter? Yes, you know, when current is pushing that fly, it might fall a little bit, but again, the trick is to hang your fly a little longer than fluorocarbon. But overall, you should be using monofilament for walleyes and I guess early spring white bass, that make any sense because you can hang that bait there a little longer. It just works better. That's just my trick, that's my tip. I think it will work a lot for the guys who are from shore. Now, when you're on boat, you have more control, right? You can anchor down, you know your pool, you can cast mono or floor or braid into that same area. You can repetitively uh, work that spot. But when you're on shore and you want that, you're making that long cast, you're able to control that hop more and put that fly in the strike zone a little longer. Now I'm not saying that fluorocarbon doesn't work. Okay? It does work. You guys see me use it all the time. I use floral here and there. Why? Because I'm playing with the depth. I'm playing with are the fish at the bottom. You know, when I do catch a fish, you can see like their belly, you know, do they have rubs and rash and uh, their tail is kind of, you know, like beat up. That's when you know they're bedding, they're on harder floor. You want that fly to sit a little lower. Yes, it is risky to have the fly sit a little longer because you might, you might snag up, you know, but that's a risk that I'm willing to take because that's just me. I'm willing to catch a fish that way. Eight pound and six pound test is the way to go. You can go 10-2 if the white bass don't care. They'll just eat, right? But six pound test is what I like to start with. Um, I just feel like the lighter line is better, right? Because the water's still cold. It's still finicky. Because you want to up the chance of putting that fly in front of them and they won't see the line, right? So, so they'll go for the bait at that time. Overall, this is what I'm using. This is what I recommend. I recommend monofilament for you guys, for you fly guys, pumping flies, whatever brand you want to use, I don't care. I use plenty of different brands from Mr. Crappie to Suffix to P-Line to Seaguar to uh, Vanish. I I use a ton of brand. I Whatever's affordable, I use it. But my opinion, just if you're going to go throw flies out there, if you're going to be more efficient as a fly pumping guy and or a gulp minnow, monofilament is the way to go. Hopefully you guys learned something today. It's a quick vlog video. I'm gonna do more of these to answer questions, to uh, review stuff, to unboxes, you know, stuff like that. And um, yeah, that's how it goes. So with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys find this video informative, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you guys want me to answer, to break down, and I'll see you guys on the water. We're going fishing tomorrow. I'm just saying, okay, stay tuned.